So we're going to hear it again tonight for a little while on how important it is to practice forgiveness, which is thinking about someone else other than yourself in a way, you could say, right? Is thinking about the person that hurt you in a kind and compassionate way instead of in an angry and hateful way. And that's the hardest thing, see? Uh, you know what? If you're just kind to the people who are kind to you, you're just a good animal. See, animals are like that. Animals are kind to their families. See that, right? If you're just kind and you know nice to people who are kind and nice to you, it's no big deal. You don't get any extra points for that. <laughs> what really makes you a human being is being kind to the people you don't like. And especially, especially, being kind to the people who have hurt you. So we're going to talk about forgiveness tonight. And, and I've given this talk several times, one time, uh, four or five times now, maybe at least. And uh, I've had people walk out. If you could get up, maybe you'd probably get something. <laughs> Some people might walk out. Because it's so hard that, you know, you, when, when somebody's confronting you, you know, right now you should be thinking about the person that, you're, that you need to forgive. And, you know, it's so hard to think of that person, let alone to think of, the, of forgiving them. And it's, it's a very hard thing. People find it so hard they don't want to even think about it. They don't even entertain it. But I suggest to you from the very start here now, okay, that you can't be happy and angry and resentful at the same time. One of those has got to go. If you're interested in being happy in life, you've got to forgive them. You've got to let it go. And it's hard. It's one of the hardest things that we have to do. And it's, uh, you know, and it's not, uh, it's not sort of surprising that it's hard. It's, it's not easy to be happy. There's a lot, as I said, mitigating against it. Or, or militating, you know, one of those things. <laughs> and one of them is, is, for example, this resistance that we have to do the thing that we know that we need to do. Huge resistance to doing what we know we need to do. We need to forgive. We need to let it go. We need to, we need to change our sense of the past. In order to be happy in the present, we need to change some parts of our sense of the past, right? The happy, the happy parts of the past you don't have to change, no problem. Okay, you can keep those. <laughs> right? All those happy times, happy memories, and so forth. You know what? You might watch, however, the tendency that we have towards nostalgia. Because that also kind of is, is designed to make you unhappy in the present, right? It's thinking, oh, it's so much better. So much better in the past. You know, the music of the 60s is so much better than the music right now. You know, the houses that he built back then are so much better. You know, the, the cars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? And if you have that kind of nostalgia problem, and you know, and we all get it. The older that we get, the, the more it comes on. The, the older that we get, the more nostalgia that we get, right? The more, the more tendency. But if you have that problem, come on, just be a little more realistic. It wasn't that good. <laughs> it really wasn't that you're overblowing it. You see, you're overestimating. It. And uh, and and it's to the detriment of the present. You see, it's to the detriment of the present. So what we're going to try to do in these three talks, uh, these three weeks, is to learn how to how to live happily in the present, which is the only time there is actually. The only time there is. But we but we in order to live happily in the present, we need to change the things about our past that we find making us unhappy. And we need to change our fears about the future that are making us unhappy in the present also. And then, then the last talk, uh, two weeks from tonight, will be on how to live happily in the present. Because, you know, it's one thing to live, live in the present, there's nothing to live happily in the present. You see? So it would be no good to live in the present if we're unhappy in the present, too. Okay. So tonight we'll start with, with learning how to change the past. Can you change the past? Is it possible to change the past? There are some people are saying no, there are some people are saying yes, and I think in a way you're both right. You can't change what happened. You can't change what happened, right? The past is gone. Is the past, is the past available to us or not? The, the past is gone, right? It's a time that has gone, right? It is no more. It is deceased. The, the, the past is no more. Yes or no? So the past is gone. So how can you change something that's gone? So where is the past? If the past doesn't exist, because it's gone, 
Is there any past that does exist? Inside? There you go. Now we're getting it. See, now we're using our heads, aren't we? Now we're putting on our little thinking cap beanies and starting to think that. See, that's religion. Thinking. So, if the, here's, what, here's the only way this past exists. The only way that the past exists is a present memory of the past. A present understanding of the past. The only past that exists is in your present mind. Yes or no? Can you change? Of course. You change the past. You change. We'll, we'll, we'll put a different word on it, okay? You change your idea of the past, which is the only past there is for you. Your present idea of the past, every time you think of it, you change it. Every time you be visited, you change it a little bit. Right? Every time. Every time. The past is never like it used to be. <laughs> And this isn't just a, you know, that's something that you learn, learn at the Three Jewels. You can learn this at the University of Arizona. You go to the history department in the University of Arizona and ask, you know, what, what is the past? And they will tell you, the past is someone's interpretation of the past. The past is an interpretation only. It's a perspective on the past. You see? And interpretations of the past, do they change or not, do you think? Do you think that American history has changed over the course of, you know, right? It's changing every five years, maybe even less, right? Nowadays, it's changed very fast. It's just a whole, whole, whole different understandings of national history. Whole different understandings. Yes? Yes or no? Yes. Everyone should be nodding their head. And you should start to smile a little bit. Because if you can change the past, see, then you can change the thing that's, that's hurting you. You can change the thing that when you think about what happened to you, see, it hurts. You can change that. The only person that's keeping that alive is you. The only person that's keeping that trauma alive, that pain, that of what happened to you in the past, what you think happened to you in the past, to put it more like more more properly, right? The only person that's keeping that alive is you. It's like um, it's like you're all Dr. Frankenstein's. We're all Dr. Frankenstein's. And every time we think about that thing, that grudge, that resentment, that pain, it's like running electrodes through the monster again. Live again. <laughs> right? And then it lives again. So, do yourself a favor and stop reviving Frankenstein. You see? Learn, learn, to, learn to, to follow your true self-interest. You see? Follow your higher self-interest. Your higher self-interest is to try to be a happy person. So that you can make other, so that you can have more space mentally available to help other people be happy. That's your job. That's your mission. That's in your self-interest. Yeah, we all want to be happy. That's your higher self-interest. Higher self-interest. So is it in your self-interest? This is the first thing. Is it in your self-interest to keep a memory that isn't useful to you? That can be changed, you see. And I'm going to teach you how to change the bad memories tonight. And, and I already gave it away, didn't I? Forgiveness. <laughs> see, forgiveness is how to, how to begin the process of changing your bad memories. Changing your past memories. I'll put it very strong. You can change your past. And, and when you change your past, you change your present. Because the only past that exists is part of your present mind. So if you gift yourself with a different past, with a happier past, you will be a happier person now.